everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the Nautilus Drydocks.com. We've got another quick project to share with you. Run through the internal workings of another very cool RC submarine. This is a 170 second scale Russian Foxtrot submarine. A really unique and rare kit. I'm very excited to share it with you. Without any further delay, let's take a look. So a bit of background on this particular kit. As I mentioned, it's a little bit rare and it's got kind of a cool story behind it. It was originally mastered by a gentleman by the name of Rick Palumbo, a company called RPM Tech. And Rick is a very exceptionally talented modeler and came up not only with some great kits, but some great watertight cylinders to go along with them. Unfortunately, Rick decided uh, after a certain amount of time to collect deposits on these wonderful products and stop supplying them to his customers. So he ended up leaving with a lot of deposits, a lot of people's money, and unfortunately they did not have the opportunity to enjoy the products. This is uh, one of the four kits that Rick produced. As I mentioned, this is a 70 second scale Russian Foxtrot submarine. It's got some really neat design features in it uh, from the you know the sonar dome on the bow there but most applicably the really cool thing are the triple propellers in the back of the boat so let's walk through this crazy thing from top to bottom stem to stern and I'll show you how I went about making this an operational RC model This is the forward battery compartment. You can see a 3000 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery hiding under there. The servo for the forward dive planes and a remote on off switch. This is a 15 amp uh, remote on off switch. We got our main ballast tank and you can see some kind of funky things going on with that. And uh, it looks like the previous owner had decided that a very large ballast tank was going to be required because it is quite a sizable model. But uh, kind of the neat thing about this boat and the way that Rick laid them up is it's exceptionally thin and light. And I'll show you that here in a moment. With that being the case, the only ballast that it really needs actually equates to uh, this plus this. Um, this is all kind of extraneous, not required, and so what I actually did is I filled that ballast tank with sections of foam, so it just basically is a, a neutral uh, ballast area that's providing flotation, um, but without the need to, pow to, to move air or water in and out of that ballast tank, so um, saves time and uh, energy within the cylinder. Um, looking forward, we can see the linkage for the ballast system. We've got our vent valve on top, uh, servo passage in there to the ballast servo. We've got a six channel receiver. We've got servos for rudder and rear planes. We've got an automatic pitch controller, the air pump for the ballast system, and the electronic speed controller, and two drive motors. We can see the, there's some plumbing that runs along, and this is for the SAS ballast system. So basically what ends up happening, as I outlined earlier with the, the Kilo video that I just uploaded a short time ago, this connects to that snorkel that I pointed out to you earlier on. If the model is submerged, this valve is closed, the ballast system kicks on, draws air from the dry compartments of the cylinder, pumps it into the ballast tank, expels the water. As soon as that snorkel breaches surface, the valve opens, air is drawn through this hose, equalizes the pressure in the cylinder and it's surface air that is then used to purge the rest of the ballast tank. It's a very slick system, uh, engineered and designed by David Merriman who also supplies the watertight cylinders. 
Uh, something that I like to do, these are Robart Quick Connects, Air Quick Connects, and this makes it just very, very easy to remove the equipment tray from the watertight cylinder without having to pry off all of the plumbing. So you just simply um, undo these connectors and you can uh, take it apart, just like the connector for the snorkel. Um, command and control is achieved via this six channel VEX Robotics transmitter. Um, these are great economical six channel radios and they work really, really well. Um, operating on 75 megahertz, which is, by the way, if you're in North America, the only legal frequency that you're allowed to utilize for submerged RC submarine operation. All right, I'm gonna show you how to install the watertight cylinder into the model. I'm just gonna pop the top off. And here we can see the inside of the boat. Uh, previous owner has some ballast adhered to the bottom of the boat, which is excellent. That's exactly where we want it to be. Um, we've got some foam applied in here for flotation. We have some Velcro hold downs for the watertight cylinder. And then we've got all of our linkages and drive shafts back there as well. If we take a look on the inside, you can actually see that all three shafts are fully functional uh, and operational, but only two are currently hooked up. Um, originally, I actually had a three motor subdriver driving this, but one of the motors ended up crapping out on me. And from my experience, this boat actually had too much thrust with all three. Uh, with two, it's still incredibly fast, um, but it eliminates the weight and complexity of the additional motor in the subdriver. So this is a, a twin shaft boat, uh, but you still got all of the aesthetics of the, uh, the three propellers in the back there. To install this, basically we are going to slip this into place. line up our drive shafts and then when you drop the cylinder down in place there is a pin uh, in the keel of the boat that aligns to a hole in the bottom of the ballast tank you just align those drop the cylinder down I'm going to put these air tubes off to the side we're going to Velcro that down, we're gonna Velcro down by the bow. And then all we do is we take these linkages, these magnetic linkages, and they just snap in place really, really strongly um, where they need to go so that all of the linkages are made up. There's no need to mess with connectors. Tuck in our receiver antenna, which by the way, if you'll watch my other videos, uh, is a hollow tube. The receiver antenna runs down the inside of it. If you pull the cap off, you can submerge the, the subdriver in water, blow into the tube, and check for leaks. So it's a great multi purpose feature to the subdriver. Now that that's all in place, I'm going to connect the snorkel. I'm going to kind of tuck the snorkel in place. You got a magnetic connector that just snaps onto the bow plane linkage. We drop our upper hull in place. Now as I mentioned, this is very, very thin. I'm going to say it's like a hair over a 32nd of an inch thick. Um, we're just going to line up our upper hull so that it's at the right position here. And what we do, I tuck one side of the hull in. In this particular case, it's the port side. I'm going to start at the bow. You just kind of lift up and tuck the little tabs into the lower hull as you go. Just lift and tuck, lift and tuck. It takes a little bit of, uh, of practice, but once you get used to it, it happens uh, fairly quickly and it results in this really beautiful tight seam all the way down the length of the boat. Once that's done, we've got a couple of stainless steel bolts. One goes in the stern back here, and the other one goes in the bow uh, up at the front, and that holds the upper hull down to the lower one. So 
So let's take a look at uh, some of the features of the boat in action. I'm going to extend the antenna, turn on the transmitter. Here's the key fob hanging off the back of the, uh, the transmitter there. I'm going to hit on. The unit powers up. And basically we are ready to go here. Um, you can see I've got override for the rear dive planes. These are autonomous. They run through that pitch controller and the pitch controller automatically adjusts the pitch of the boat to uh, keep the boat level. Um, we have got forward dive planes. We've got our rudder, our throttle. It's nice and smooth. And then on the, uh, the horizontal axis, I've got the ballast control so we can dive and we can surface. And when I hit surface, you can hear that air pump kicking in to pump the air into the ballast tank. Well, there we go, kind of a super fast overview of this really cool 70 second Foxtrot submarine. Let's go take a look at how it performed in the pool. It's a surprisingly good performer and I really enjoyed operating it. I can't wait for the customer to get it out on some open water and really see what it can do. Well, there you go. That concludes my overview of this really cool Russian Foxtrot RC submarine. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed building it. For this and many other projects, I urge you to check out the other videos in my YouTube channel. I've got a lot out there. I've also got all of the kits, parts, components, resources, and information on my sub, uh, website at Nautilus Drydox. Dot com. Please head over, check it out. I am Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com. Thank you for joining me. We will catch you next time.